Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm Ashley and this is Martin Midlife Misadventures and today we're going to flower it up and it's kind of a flower it up vlog because I have a lot of baking I have to do today. Our weather's been bad. I haven't been able to bake as usual and take care of things. So I've got two loaves of French bread I need to bake. I'm going to bake some cupcakes. I'm not making frosting because we're going to do berries and stuff like that on them later. Uh, and I need to make some pizza dough because we want to make a pizza. I, and more importantly, or more specifically, I'm going to make a Mexican pizza, but I'm not going to be doing that until later tonight. So uh, maybe I'll take a quick video of that and post that separately, but we are going to make the dough. Are you ready to flour it up? Let's get started. I just wanted to show you, even in the trailer, our small space, I keep a five gallon bucket full of flour that's how often I use it. And today, it just so happens that my one in might look at, it's almost empty. So I'm going to fill that up and I'm going to get four cups of flour for my first recipe. All right, friends, I have my four cups of flour inside my bowl. Remember, I'm making two small French loaves today. I've got one and a third cups of warm water. I'm going to be using uh, probably a heaping teaspoon or so of salt three and a half to four tablespoons of sugar. I'm going to use about two large, you could use just one packet of yeast and that would work per perfect for this, or two like heaping teaspoons, four tablespoons of olive oil or any oil of your choice, and that's also equal to a quarter cup. And I already said we have four cups of flour. So let me get the salt and sugar in this bowl and show you what I do next. All right, friends, in my bowl here, I have my four cups of all-purpose flour. I added one teaspoon of salt, and I'm just going to kind of mix it around a little while. Let's go ahead and make a well in the center, and to that, I'm going to add my sugar. I want that right in the bottom there, so let's go ahead and get our sugar in there. We're going to do four tablespoons. Now, on top of that, I'm going to add my yeast. I'm not measuring mine, but like I said, a packet or about two and a half teaspoons. To that now, I'm going to add my one and a third cups of warm water. I'm going to pour it kind of slowly so I can keep it concentrated in this center where that sugar is underneath that yeast. And by pouring it slowly, it just kind of mixes it up too. We're gonna let this sit, I mean, just for like two minutes. All right, it's been about a minute and a half. I'm not really timing. It's just the time it took for me to clear the extra stuff off, okay? So now with our spatula, we're gonna mix this up until we get a shaggy dough. Same thing we normally do. I'm just doing a larger batch so I can have two loaves. See that? That is shaggy. Can you tell the way it looks? Okay, that's your shaggy dough. Clear off your spatula so you don't waste any. And let's get our oil. Like I said, four tablespoons, but that is also equal to one quarter of a cup. So that's what we're going to put in here. And make sure you fill it till it's almost overflowing. That's your exact measure. Now dump it in and don't waste any. Now we need, you just get in there and get all that oil pressed in. And we need this dough. Probably going to need it for at least two to three minutes. All right, that was about five minutes, okay? It's not sticking to me, comes off very easily. So we're going to make a ball. Put a little oil in the bottom, just a little. bit on top. And 
Now we're going to put our lid on it and we're going to let it rise for one hour. All right, friends, I just want to show you I'm getting ready to make my cupcakes, which I am using a box mix, but I want to show you a trick, okay? I have large muffins. These are the large muffins, okay? But I only have the standard size cup, which doesn't... It fits, but there is extra room, and when you start pouring, it'll fall in itself. If you turn them inside out, like this... Then they'll stretch all the way to the sides. Have you ever gotten a muffin and it has just a little muffin thing around it? This is how they do it. All right, let me get the cake mix ready. I'm just following the box and it's one cup of water. Looks like a half a cup of vegetable oil and three eggs. So let's start with our eggs. Actually, I'm going to start with our water. I've got one cup right here. I'm going to put our oil in because I want to use the container. This is a quarter cup, so we're going to need two of these. Oh! Oh! That's it. Guys, I don't know if we can use this anymore. Oh my gosh, I'm going to keep this in. Can you believe what just happened? I squoze that too much. Let's pull some of it out. Oh! I'm going for it. Oh my goodness, look at this mess. All right, we're going for it. I think I'm gonna start with two eggs because that's a lot of oil maybe. We'll see. Oh my gosh, guys, what have I done? See, nothing goes perfect in the kitchen and I thought I was saving time by using a box mix. Okay. Let's do this is actually off of my mixer, but I just use it by hand. Let's see how thick this is gonna be. Oh, I hope. Oh guys, this might be alright. I'm going to add just a little bit of that back in there because I think it needs to be just a little thinner. I think we're going to be all right. All right, then. Wow, I sure wasted a lot of oil. I'll be using my regular oil container from now on instead or do it over the sink or something. My goodness, can you believe that happened? Let's get our muffin tin. Now I'm going to fill them up. Almost to the tippy top on these. Always tap them down and you'll get any extra air bubbles out of them. I don't know if you can see, but they are coming out. You can see air bubbles coming out. All right, the directions say four cupcakes, 14 to 19 minutes, but that's for the smaller kind. So these are probably going to take at least 20 minutes. This one's, there we go. It was a little crooked. All right, into the oven. I'll let you know how long they take. All right, we've got our second batch. Now, I will tell you right off the bat, these did not rise as big as they should have, and that's 100% because I dumped that oil in. But they look really, really good. These are the hot, hot ones. These are not hot. See how they all come up? No problem. Let me pull one out. Oh, I just broke it, so we'll have to take a look inside. But see how the muffin does? If these had grown to their actual size, let me pull a piece off so you can see inside. Looks good. I think I'm going to have to test this one. Mm. We did not hurt those at all. Okay, they taste delicious. Let's check out this bread and see where we're at. Oops. Let's see here. Let's get this adjusted so we can see in the bowl. All right. Looks good. It's more than double in size. It's coming off. This is a little stickier 
the normal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it in half right inside this bowl. If one of the loaves is a little bigger than the other, it's not really going to matter. Now I'm going to shape it, okay? And the way I do that, this is such soft, beautiful dough. But I want to roll it up a little. So we're going to stretch it out just by hand. Stretch it out. You could put it on your cutting board and do it, but I just don't want to risk anything sticking to it. So I just stretch it out into my arm like this, and then I roll it up. Simply just roll it up. When you roll it, it adds these extra air pockets inside the loaf. And that's how I do it. I just roll it up like that, turn it over, pinch the ends in like this, See how it wants to stick just a little? That's why I like to do it in my hands. Now we're going to place it on here. See, I have a little something there. Okay. Right. You can try to make them look a little prettier. They are going to rise a little here, okay? So what we're going to do... And the way I do it is whichever one comes out prettier, I'll give that one to mom and grandpa. But this, what I do now is take a little knife, and cut a little slit down the center. Just like that, we're going to let these rise for about 20 minutes. I'm going to lay a little tea towel over them, and I'm going to preheat my oven to 400 degrees. All right, friends, look at these loaves. Don't they look delicious? These are going to go into the oven for 15 to 20 minutes at 400 degrees. Would you look at these? Oh, my goodness. They are done. Mm. Let's see here. Now, I want to tell you this. If you want crispy French bread, do nothing to it and just let it sit. But if you want this to be softer, get yourself some butter or some margarine, and you just need it to be soft, and brush it on immediately. I mean immediately. And do not be shy with it. And it soaks into the top. It eventually just goes away. You don't see it. And it makes for the softest bread. And that's how you do it. That's how we do it. That's it, guys. Now I have two loaves. One for Mom and Grandpa, and one for me and Amy. And this will last us through the entire weekend. All right, now I'm making my pizza crust for tonight. Same thing, I've got two cups of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons of sugar, about a heaping teaspoon of yeast on the bottom there, and I'm adding um, two-thirds a cup of warm water. Gonna use our little spatula, get to our shaggy dough. This is the exact same bowl I just pulled those French breads out of. No need to wash it. It's the exact same thing, just on a smaller scale. So we're going to get this shaggy. I can already tell this is a little less shaggy than the last one. So we might end up using a little less. We're going it, to, it's two tablespoons. Here I am. You see what I'm doing here with my olive oil? Squirting it right in there. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? I didn't even learn and it just happened. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of olive oil in here. Get it all kneaded in nicely. And there we have it. My pizza dough's ready. I'm going to cover this. This I'm actually going to rise twice because I'm not going to need it right away. Now what I can do is I can rise it and then I can punch it down and put it in the refrigerator and pull it out about 30 minutes before I'm ready to use it. That's more than likely how this is going to go because it's only 12 noon here right now. This will be ready by 1. We won't be ready for dinner until about 5. 
All right, friends, how about that cake mix? Oh my gosh, guys, can you believe it? But it actually is okay. I think it did affect the leavening, though, because they weren't as big and round, but that's okay. We're going to cut them in half and put some berries on them anyway. They're absolutely delicious. So if something like that happens in your kitchen, don't just dump the whole thing in the garbage. Give it a try and keep going. Accidents happen, and that's why I left that in. I mean, what was I supposed to do? And that happens to be the only cake mix I have left in the trailer so I had to make it work. All right everybody keep experimenting. Get your pre-made mixes when they go on sale but learn how to make some things from scratch as well. Sorry I didn't show you the actual making of the pizza and I am doing something different with that but we're not going to be eating that for several more hours so maybe I'll make a separate little video or, or at least take a picture of the pizza and post it in the community tab so you can see how I did that pizza. All right everybody keep flowering it up. Do not stop. We love you all so much. God bless you.